What's going on? Clay coming up on about 20 games. It isn't there yet, but kind of a marker. How, how are you feeling just about how the season's gone so far and what's coming next? Uh, season's been a um, great start, kind of mediocre second part after that, but uh, it's such a long season. There's uh, no room to get us discouraged, only to keep working, and um, it's going to help tremendously getting uh, Draymond back tomorrow and just uh, a lot to look forward to. Clay, you're kind of <clears throat> joking or messing around with Raymond with the, with the prize money of, of the in-season tournament. And you know, a lot of people have been saying, especially for the younger guys, that the money is a big motivator and stuff. But for you veterans, for someone like yourself who has won championships and, and has been an all-star and, and all these things, what, where do you get motivation for, for these in-season tournament games? Mm hmm just trying to be the best teammate I can be and playing my hardest and coming out with a winning outcome so everyone can feel the uh, benefits of winning, which would be obviously more money in your pocket, but just another thing to celebrate. The first in-season tournament would be a cool uh, thing to win and pretty historic. Kirk talks a lot about believing in his guys, especially the starting lineup, won championship not too long ago, having patience, letting guys kind of, you know, find their game. How aware are you of that kind of patience and, or, and in, how much, do, you know, do you value it? What do you, you want me to bench me? No, no, no. It's like that's – You want bench some, wigs? <laughs> you want I don't think us? I said that. Okay. I mean, if you can suggest it, it's fine. But, I mean, thanks, Steve, I guess. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you earn these things, like patience and time to find yourself. And I think history will uh, is on our side when it comes to that stuff. You say that. Do you, have you heard people say that? or is, No, I don't care what people say. Like, they don't do what we do. They can't do what they do. That's why they talk. Why would I? Like, come on. I don't care what people say at this point in my life. Next question. Brandon's talked a lot about kind of some of the work he's done with Steph and really kind of picking his brain. Just wanted to ask, has he picked your brain too, especially about shooting and maybe where you've seen him improve the most from the summer to now? I love BP and he plays really hard and he is uh, comes, to, comes to work every day with so much joy and um, like he's just a great young player to have around who is trying to make the most of his ability, and I know he will, and I know he's going to have a great NBA career. Steve kind of said that like his fastball should be his shot right away because he's such a good shooter, especially obviously he showed that at Santa Clara. Have maybe you or Steph or anybody else kind of push him like, hey, you have an open shot. Keep shooting it. Let it fly. Uh, I haven't, but I'll definitely relay the message. I think it would <laughs> mean something come from me. So love BP. I mean, got a great looking jump shot, and he's a great passer, and he's a great rebounder, and he's just looking like a steal of a draft. I know he hasn't been around as much as some other guys, but what have you thought of Guy Santos and his development just from what you've seen? Mm. I haven't seen Guy much. I've seen him play with Santa Cruz, and um, he's a really good player. I saw him dominate Canada at the FIBA World Cup. That's all I needed to see. He's going to be a solid, solid pro. Um, what have you thought about where uh, Moses Moody is right now in year three and just kind of his development? I love Moses, and he's going to play in the NBA as long as he wants. And I think he's developing wonderfully, wonderful, <laughs> so... He's going to help us do what we need to do this year. One more Brandon question. How, how much has he sought guidance and mentorship from you? I know he's, he's interacted with Steph a lot. Has he, has he also asked you a bunch of questions, or how much has he sort of leaned on you? Um, honestly, we just enjoy being around each other. I enjoy him 
and his energy. You need that. And I uh, just love hanging around Brandon because he brings it every single day. And that's really hard to do. That takes a special talent. Play, I got two questions for you. Number one, uh, what's with the Tennessee Titans hat? Are you, are you a fan? Uh, I was in my closet, and it was cold outside, and I was a huge Steve McNair and Eddie George fan, so I've supported them ever since. Old school. All right. uh, Wiggins had a pronounced slump. He said it was the worst of his career. Mm. Uh, what, what did you notice about him, uh, how he kind of worked his way back, maybe how, how he handled his mindset as, as somebody who's close with him? Uh, how do you think he just dealt with all that? I thought Wiggs is doing a great job. I mean, he shows up. He plays every night. He's an incredible athlete. Uh, and um, I just love being his teammate. He's been awesome to play alongside, and he truly is a gamer. Like, I've seen him rise to, mul to the occasion on multiple times, and... I don't care that he is it's not shooting the ball to his standard right now. I know he's going to be great for us, and especially when we need him most. The player that you've been on the court with the most so far this year is Chris Paul. It is CP3. Just wanted to kind of get your thoughts about what, to, what it's like playing with him and what the difference is sharing the floor with Steph. Yeah, I think uh, being with him, it's been a little bit of an adjustment for me, um, especially going back to – you know, college of me predominantly being on the ball. And with Steph, get to play more of my natural position and, like, facilitate. Um, whereas with CP, I'm more off the ball. When I do get the ball, it's usually to make a shot. So it's a little bit different, um, but it's what the team needs, so I'm here for whatever. Steve was saying kind of, like, from a baseball perspective, you're someone who could have five pitches, but he wants the fat, like your fastball to be your shot. Have you had more and more of coaches and teammates maybe saying, hey, you got an open shot? Let it fly. Have you have you felt that more? Yeah, I think since training camp started, uh, I've heard that a lot. But um, for me, I kind of just try to make the right play. Um, I think last year in college, I didn't really catch and shoot much um, a lot as much as I was self-creating for myself or others. Um, so it was a little bit of an adjustment. But um, I think of as of late, I've been shooting the ball pretty well. And a lot of those have came off catch and shoot opportunities. Has there been a player maybe that you've talked about that a little bit, finding that right balance? Yeah, I think um, Steve does a, does a great job talking about the fastball, um, per se. Steph's done a great job of just telling me to just let it fly, and we don't really care if you miss or not. Just shoot the best ones because the play's already been created for you. Um, so just kind of those little things. How much more comfortable do you feel now, six, seven weeks into the season, than you did when, you start, when this started? Season? Yeah, I feel really comfortable. Especially after that uh, in-season tournament game, I got to play a lot of minutes in um, gets high-level competition. I feel really comfortable uh, going up against anybody, playing how many ever minutes I need to play. And how much of a factor in your development do you think it is that you're on a team like this with so many veterans and not expected to play 30 minutes a night and, and you know produce right away? And there's a, a little more patience, a little more of a, a ramp up, I guess, here than there would be with the team that drafted in the top five or ten. Yeah, I think it's a blessing in disguise. I think in the long run, you're going to see what impact this year is going to have on my career. Um, you know, maybe guys that are dra drafted top ten play right away, but don't get to experience what a winning culture is. And for me, I think this year I get to experience that. So then, you know, years down the road when I'm leading a team, um, I know what that feels like. Curse mentioned there's a little lack of clarity in the rotation back end. Bunch of guys may be playing for a couple spots. Uh, I'm sure you you know you want the team to do well, but how much is there kind of little internal competition, knowing some of these minutes are you know n not guaranteed for for you guys? 100 percent is internal um, competition. You always obviously want to see the team succeed, but you also want you know personal success yourself. Um, so for us, I think you know there's you know four or five guys that are just trying to compete for those small amount of minutes um, when the stars aren't on the floor and. I think we all do a great job. We all kind of bring something different. So I think for Steve, it's kind of whatever the game calls for, and that's who he'll go to. You, you clearly were going to be you no matter what team you went to. Uh, did you expect to be, like, have your kind of confidence and swagger embraced the way it has been by these kind of old veteran players? Yeah, I, I think I think so just because 
I bring that to the table, but I also understand like what lines to cross and not cross and have that respect for guys that have been before me and have done such great things in this league. Um, so I think for me, it's just been able to find a great balance of that um, while maintaining of being the person who I am. Was it like, uh, how did it feel when they're like, yo, I like this guy. When you get, you know, you got four time champion saying that about you. Yeah, I think it's cool. And I think for me, um, I think I'm pretty good with people, so it's kind of easy for me to read the room and what they feel. Um, but yeah, it was great to you know have guys like Steph and be welcoming like that. Did you watch them as when you know were you like 12 or 13 when they were? In yeah, I watched. Uh, I think that was 12 or 13. So it was that eight years ago. So that was 15, 16 season for them. So um, definitely when I started watching them. But when I moved out here to the West Coast, play at Santa Clara, I watched a lot more. Bet you didn't know Steph dropped 51 in Orlando on your birthday. Yeah, what was that? 2016, yeah, yeah. You didn't know that. I didn't, but he had that. <laughs> hey, to my defense, he had that three. He had that three game stretch where he had what 40 or more in three straight yeah, yeah. games on the East Coast. The next game was the OKC game. Yeah, it was Miami, Miami, Orlando, then OKC, right? Yeah. All right, all right, you on it, yeah. you on it. Yeah. <laughs>